LDBC, this is your boy Coach Sheldon Harrison. You're live, live, live on the Coach Sheldon Harrison Combat Sports Show Live. Okay, guys, I got to give a shout-out to Tony Fernando. Uh, he is a guy that, uh, he's got a YouTube channel. He doesn't make videos, but he definitely comments on my videos. Uh, we don't see eye-to-eye -eye on some topics, but I respect the guy. Uh, he's a sensei, and he's teaching people where he's from. He's teaching people the fine arts of martial arts. And anybody that teaches martial arts, I have a deep respect for that person, and that's just the way that is. Um, Tony sent me a video, and the guys, I, I've been saying this for a while, that these fighters, they they get the short end of the stick when it comes to this UFC thing. Um, but I'm going to talk more so on the part of the women, okay? I'm going to talk, talk on behalf of the women. The men, you know, yes, you know, it's happening to them too as well. And they're also getting the short stand in the stick. But I want to do my best to help promote these women, okay? That's what I do on this channel. Um, and I've told y'all this a lot of different times that, you know, the UFC, they're getting over. And they're getting over hand and fist. Now, I am for a promoter making money. Because, see, you know, guys, when I really researched, when I really researched how they put on the card, how they do everything on down from, you know, how they put the uh, octagon in place. I mean, everything, guys. I mean, you know, who, who are they going to pick for announcers? I mean, how do they do the rotation? Who's going to do the post-fight show? I mean, you know, the lighting, okay, the, the background music for the fighters. I mean, the insurance, the medical checks. I mean, guys, if you really understood how much work went into putting on the show, you would have another appreciation for a promoter. So I am all for a promoter getting their cut of the share. But I'm not all for a promoter getting the lion's share when they're not in there taking the octagon. But I believe in a promoter doing that because that's business, okay? I understand business. It's, it's business, okay? And these promoters, they work hard as well, and they deserve what they work for. Um, but here's a hypocrit hypocritical thing that I dislike about the UFC, and I've always disliked this. And uh, even when they went to Reebok sponsorship, I knew that it was going to be the end all for a lot of these fighters. I knew financially it was going to suck for a lot of fighters because a lot of fighters, they don't depend on their contract salary. You know, they depend on sponsorships. Well, now they're, they're purely sponsored by Reebok. So it's kind of like, you know, they can, sub they can get into, you know, serious trouble if they're wearing things that are not, you know, Reebok, Reebok apparel. And it's kind of weird, man. It's really weird. But... I find it ironic when I watch the video that some of the sponsors that you see on the screen, um, these fighters can't put these sponsors on their uniforms. And these are sponsors that would. You know, I've seen these sponsors before on people's uniforms uh, when the, before Reebok took over the UFC. I've seen some of these same sponsors, okay, on people's uniforms. But now these sponsors, no, they can't be on a fighter's uniform. But, you know, holy hell, the UFC they have these same sponsors all around the arena in the octagon and you see some of these sponsors so the UFC can pull these sponsors in and they pay the UFC directly <laughs> I mean it's a genius money making strategy it's genius but the thing of it is it's good for the UFC's bank account but it's not good for the fighters bank account and see the UFC they got that mentality see they can't let the fighter because if you think about it, they can't let the fighter get too big. They can't let the fighter make too much. Because, see, if the fighter can make too much money, if they can do too much, then guess what? They'll have too much of a thought. Then they'll have a lot of freedom because come money, there's freedom. And the more money you make, the more freedom you get. See, they'll tell these fighters, well, we can't afford to pay you this. And they'll give these fighters a piece of the pie, a small piece, just enough to keep them happy. Just enough. But when these fighters, they want to diversify their income and make more, they can't do it. See, anything that these fighters try to do, they're contractually bound to the UFC. The UFC either going to get a portion of it or the UFC going to tell them, no, it's not going to happen. Why do you think Conor McGregor is having so much problems, so many problems making a fight with Floyd Mayweather, the biggest payday of his career? I mean, why, why, why do you think that? I mean, do you think that, you know, uh, Conor just won't? I mean, of course Conor wants the payday. Of course he would want to fight Floyd Mayweather because he ain't going to have a chance of getting knocked out. Floyd ain't going to knock him out. But the thing of it is, it's, it's, it's easy money. It'll be the easiest loss that he ever took. 
but why why do you think you know the ufc they proposed 80 percent? oh they'll give him some they'll give connor some but they can't have connor being powerful they can't have that because see when you have the fighters having a voice and these are powerful they become powerful then you can't control them see this is all about control See, what the UFC is doing right now, this is all about control, okay? There's no dipl diplomacy going on. This is about pure control. And if somebody can control you, if they can control your finances, they can control what you think. Folks, that's just how it is, okay? You know, think about it, folks. So from the standpoint of the women, there are a lot of women's fighters who live, I mean, they live fight to fight. Most of the women, they have full-time jobs because they what they make their salary they can't afford to live on the salary that they make i mean jermaine duran de may is a police officer she has to be a cop you know she got to work what 40 50 hours a week and then she got to try to figure out another 25 hours to go train i mean you got people like leslie smith you know that you know she got to do little things to make ends meet she do commentating she does speaking engagements all over and she also does a little bit of training you know but she got to do that to make the ends meet because fighting is our main source of income right now. I mean, you got uh, Chris Cyborg. Chris Cyborg does Zumba fitness classes, okay? Chris Cyborg, get, you know, does training lessons, you know? Chris Cyborg, and people say, well, why would Chris Cyborg train with Paige Van Zandt? Why would she not train with her? I mean, that's paper. That's paycheck. That's, 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 that's paper. Chris Cyborg need the paper. She need it. I mean, you know, think. When the last time Chris Cyborg done fought? When the last time she she honestly that, that, that she's fought? It's been a minute. And if you think, let's say if Chris Cyborg, let's take her for example, okay? Let's say if Chris made, let's just say six figures, okay? Let's say if she even got a bonus of $150,000, okay? I mean, I'm sorry, let's say if she got a bonus of $50,000. So let's say Chris Cyborg in one night made $150,000. Now, that, that's a lot of money. To a lot of people, that's a lot of money. To the fighter... It's not much because here's what's going to happen. Taxes, you got to pay taxes. 30% of your money are already gone. Okay, that is it. Before you even get your check, there it is. Taxes, got you. Or you got to pay taxes. When they give it to you, you got to pay taxes on it. You got to pay another 10% to your manager. So if you add that up, 40% of your money, that's already gone. 40% is already gone, so, you know, that's probably going to leave you now with, what, close to, what, $85,000, 90000 okay? I don't have a calculator here, but somewhere around that area. All right? So, you got to pay, you know, after you pay your manager, then you, the UFC, they're going to take their cut. The UFC will probably get about 25%, okay? And I might be wrong on the actual numbers, but somewhere in that frame, it could be anywhere from, from 25 to 30% is what the UFC will get. So now you're looking at what your pay is, okay? You're looking at your pay, okay? And you don't have much left, okay? You don't have much left. About 60 to 70% of your money is already out the door. And if you have sparring partners doing your training camp, you got to pay them. You got to break them off a little bit. You do, okay? I mean, now, if you guys are in the same gym, then sometimes they can get around that. Because, you know, you're actually helping the other fighter train for a fight as well when you're sparring with them. So sometimes it can actually work out as, as an even negative, you know, so you can break even. And you don't have to pay them anything because you're helping them as they're helping you. But, you know, I'm just, I'm just saying. I'm just saying, you know, well, what does the fighter have left over? So now your $150,000 salary, now you easily got about $60,000, okay? When it's all said, $60,000 living in california that that don't go a long way so what do you think chris cyborg is doing now uh chris cyborg ass is hustling that's what she doing see before reebok took this thing over man these fighters they were able to put these sponsorships on their uniforms and get that extra money and that extra money helped a lot of these fighters man especially the women but you know it's funny that the go it's funny that the ufc they can you know alter this they can take these sponsorships and they can make money on these sponsorships but these damn fighters can't make a damn thing i mean it's just like um like these video games these ufc video games by ea sports that's another thing man i'm like god dog are you serious you know in, in some of the contracts you know some of the fighters they get so excited you know of hey i'm a part of the ufc hey i'm a part of the ufc 
And even in fine print in some of the contracts, you know they can opt not to give you any of the game royalties. Like, you sign your contract for the set amount, and in that contract, they could just opt not to give you any royalties on video games, future video games. Yeah. Crazy. They can actually sell millions of copies of a video game, and you wouldn't even get royalties on it. But your name, your face, your likeness, all of that's in the video game, and people can play as you. <laughs> And then I found this one kind of funny. You know, in that video, they were saying you can't wear, okay, you can't wear any sports equipment. Anything sporty, you know, that you wear, you, it has to be Reebok, even on your own public time. Could you imagine Valentina and Antonina, they at Tiger Muay Thai, and they got to wear Reebok? I mean, could you imagine Valentina, you know, uh, getting fined because she don't have on Reebok? I mean, when they go to Tiger Muay Thai, they wear Tiger Muay Thai stuff. I mean, see, this is the kind of stupid ridiculousness, man, that's, you know, the reason why that so many fighters, they actually, they hate a lot of things that's going on. And some of these fighters trying to jump ship. Some of them trying to jump ship. I mean, how you think Chael signing them? They ain't trying to come back. Quentin Jackson, you know, that man, these guys ain't trying to get back. They trying to do their own thing. They got their little video games online, and Quentin like to play, making money doing that. I mean, folks... This is slave trade labor at its best. <laughs> if you honestly look at this, and then the one guy they had in the video, you know, this dude was humiliated, man. The guy got humiliated. I mean, you know, he was going to, he was going to do an interview, and he had on a pair of Jordans. They made the guy take his damn shoes off. I mean, it's humiliating. I know they fight with no shoes on. But, you know, you're in your, your casual clothes, and, and you're trying to, you know, really, you know, talk to the media, and you got to do it. Man, that's, he was humiliated, man. The guy was completely humiliated and, you know, like, damn, okay. I mean, what else, man? Then, you know, these women, they're having wardrobe malfunctions all over the place, man. Wardrobe. I done counted eight since I've been watching, really keeping up with the women. They have wardrobe malfunctions. Like, they got to try to, you know, put their titties back in a damn bra. And then, you know, they got to try to fight. Or you got to keep the shorts from riding up in your behind, man. I mean, it's, it's crazy. This Reebok material stuff is crap, man. These fighters, they can't stand that material. They can't stand it. They can't stand how this stuff looks. They don't like how it feels. They hate the Reebok stuff, man. But they can't wear what they want to wear, which I think that's kind of crazy. It's atrocious. If they're going to do it, man, they need to compromise. They, gonna co they need to compromise, man. If you're you making these guys wear Reebok, let them have sponsorships on their stuff, man, so these fighters can make some more money. But like I told y'all before, see, the less money, if you can control somebody's income, you can control them. Because if they got money from outside sources, even if they got little deals going on on the outside, guess who going to get, guess who got to be a part of it? The UFC. See, once you sign that contract, you become a slave. And that is just the way that is. This is your boy, Coach Shelton Harris, and I'm done. What are you waiting on? Subscribe.